discussing organic technical technology course module 6 and I have taken 4 lectures on this and already in the last lecture you have discussed about the thermal cracking processes. So, the today I will be discussing about the catalytic cracking and in catalytic cracking we will be discussing about the fruit catalytic cracking, hydro cracking advances which has been taken place in case of the FCC and coverage this is the actually the uh, typical you can see the uh, fluid catalytic cracking unit of the Panipat refined. Uh, the coverage of the lecture that is in two part one is the fluid catalytic cracking process where the brief introduction about the FCC how the evaluation of the fluid catalytic cracking from fixed bed to FCC that has taken place, feed stock for the FCC, major landmarks in the history of the FCC, main reactions in the FCC process is step, typical operating parameter, FCC catalyst because there has been continuous development in case of the FCC catalyst from the now the FCC is running from the gasoline to propylene mode. So, what are the advancement that has taken in the FCC catalyst that we will be discussing advanced catalytic cracking process which is just to basic objective had mean to increase the um, uh, production of the propylene. Operational features of the Inmox technology that has been developed by IUC Indian Al Corporation and the hydro cracking we will be discussing about the introduction of the hydro cracking, comparison of the catalytic cracking and the hydro cracking, why the hydro cracking we are doing because the earlier it was the fruit catalytic cracking and from the fruit catalytic again the hydro cracking in many of the refineries now they have they are having both the FCC and the hydro cracking. Then the hydro cracking because in case of the hydro cracking both the pre treat and the cracking reaction that is taking place. So, the hydro uh, crack hydro treating catalyst and the hydro cracking catalyst single stage and two stage process are there in case of the hydro cracking. So, that we will be discussing in the next few slides. Let us discuss about the history of the catalytic uh, cracking, catalytic cracking process was developed in 1920 by Eugen foundry for upgradation of the residue was commercialized later in 1930 and this was the fixed bed technology that was the cyclic free bed configuration that was the original process of the catalytic cracking. Now, the with the evolution of the um, uh, coming of the uh, development in case of the fertilization technology, now most of the uh, units they are having the fluid bed catalytic cracking. There has been continuous upgradation in the catalytic cracking processes from its incept of the fixed bed technology to later fluid bed catalytic cracking. Fluid catalytic cracking is now major secondary conver conversion process in petroleum refinery since 1942. That was the time when the UOP introduced that uh, uh, fluid catalytic cracking process. Global demand by the catalytic uh, global demand for clean fuels has driven the need for increase diesel yield which has promoted an increase in the implementation of new hydro crackers. That is about the high, why the hydro crackers are. Design of new hydro cracking units are challenged by the difficult feed stock from heavy sore crudes and residue upgrading units. Now, let us come to the fluid catalytic cracking, then I will be discussing about the hydro cracking. Fluid catalytic cracking is now major secondary conversion process in the refinery since 1942. There are more than 400 FCC units in world. So, now you cannot imagine a refinery without FCC. The process provides around 50 percent of all transportation fuel and 35 percent of the total gasoline pool because the cracked gasoline which you are getting from the FCC that is going to the gasoline pool that is in the form of the reform together. FCC is the multi component catalyst system with circulating fluid bed reactor system with the reactor regenerator system configuration because here in case of the uh, FCC we are having the reactor and regenerator both this is, uh, are there. Introduction of large number of the additives for boosting of the gasoline octane yield of the light nectar SOX control nickel and vanadium. Uh, Passivation gasoline to propylene mode operation because now the many of the about the around 30 percent of the propylene that is coming from the FCC. So, many of the uh, refinery they are operating 
F C C in the propylene mode, not the gasoline mode. Although F C C units are measure conversion process in defining how the desired products lead is shifting in increasing towards light olefin production, especially the propylene. Conventional F C C units typically produce about 3 to 6 percent uh, propylene, but F C C propylene accounts for almost 30 percent of the global propylene now. So, the shift in the technology of the shift in the catalyst which has resulted in the increase propylene. Similarly, C 4, C 5 gases that can be recovered from the F C C gases and that is now providing a very valuable product and one of the major product from the F C C that is M T B and team that is the oxygenate that we are producing. Introduction of zeolite catalyst during 1960 which has resulted in lower residence time, introduction of ultra stable y zeolite in mid 60s, switch over from fixed bait cracking to the riser cracking technology, feed stock for the uh, FCC. Because what is happening as we discussed during the crude air distillation, we are getting the residue from atmospheric column, then the that residue that is going to the vacuum column and where we are separating the light vacuum in the form of the light vacuum gas oil and the heavy vacuum gas oil. So, these are the some of the actually um, uh, feed stock for the FCC. Apart from that, just like the vacuum gas oil, hydro treated VGO that you are getting there from the vacuum gas column, hydro cracker bottom because now the many of the refineries they are having the hydro cracker that is also producing heavy residue, coker gas oil that is also from we are getting from the um, thermal cracking process, de asphalted oil, reduced crude oil and vacuum is that is the why reduce that is the residue FCC now some of the units they are having the they call it the residue FCC. So, typical feed stock consists of vacuum and atmospheric gas oil, but may include other heavy steam also as I told you that may be from the hydro cracker, that may be from the coker and other units also the heavy residue that will go to the either the catalytic cracking means the FCC or it may be the hydro cracker. Major contaminant in the feed includes carbon residue and the metals. While FCC process feed containing up to 4 percent condensation carbon, uh, carbon, so millisecond catalytic cracking process can process all kinds of the feed. That is the development in case of the uh, FCC where the uh, residence time that has been decreased. Catalytic cracking cracks low value high molecular weight hydrocarbons to more value added products, low molecular weight hydrocarbons. So, product are gasoline, LPG diesel along with the very important petrochemical feed stock like petrochemical C4 gases like isobutylene, isobutene, butane and butene. Because these are the some of the very important hydrocarbons we are getting from the C4 steam of the FCC and some of the refineries apart from the propylene they are recovering. Isobutylene that is converted to um, MTB in the process in some of the refinery, although there is ban on the MTB in many of the countries, but MTB and isobutane that can be used for the conversion to isobutylene or some other similarly butane and butene also. The la a large number of the C4 gases that we are getting and that processing of the C4 gases again we will be discussing while discussing the petrochemical part. Main reaction involved in the cracking, cracking of the paraffins, naphthenes and side chain of the aromatic isomerization, dehydrogen of the naphthenes and olefins, hydrogen production will be there, cyclization and condensation of the olefins, alkylation and dealkylation. A series of reaction that is taking place, these are the some of the reaction that is taking place, major primary reaction in the catalytic cracking, the alkyl naphthene, paraffins alkyl aromatic, um, uh, the naphthene. So, these are the some of the products which are getting from the. So, the process steps, what are the process steps in case of the um, catalytic cracking when I am talking about catalytic means the FCC that is the reaction, regeneration of the catalyst 
and the fractionation of the product which we are getting from the FCC. So, these are the three major steps involved and regeneration of catalyst that has uh, that is very important part of the catalytic cracking process. Reaction, in the reaction what is happening feeds of reacts with the catalyst and cracks into different hydrocarbon. Regeneration catalyst is reactivated by burning of coke because normally in the all the cracking process some formation of the coke because of the various reaction that is taking place that takes place and that coke has to be removed for la long longer life of the catalyst to improve the performance of the catalyst and so the continuous regeneration of the catalyst is there and then it is recirculated in the reactor. Then the third part after the reaction regeneration is complete, the product which you are getting from the catalytic cracking that is going to the col distillation column for separation of the various products like LPG and gasoline, light cycle oil that is also actually another um, that is low value added product that we are getting light cycle and heavy cycle air or withdrawn that from the side stream of the I will discuss about the flow diagram there it is clear here you see the this is the typical fluid catalytic process where you are getting the here this is the fluid cutting cracking reactor and then the process here boiler feed water because here the catalyst regenerated catalyst that is going to the fluid catalytic cracking and then this is the main uh, fractionating column where the catalyst continues from the fluid catalytic cracking catalyst that will go to regenerator and the, because CO is also there. So, that is going to the acid that is going to the CO boiler that is called the um, here in the power generation and then the after the fractionation what is happening we are getting the FCC that is a major source of LPG in the refinery. So, the overhead from the overhead will be getting the that will go to the stabilization column where the LPG is separated and then the you will be getting the gas name. Heavy naphtha also we are here also we are getting light fuel, light cycle oil, fuel oil, the bottom product that will be the heavy residue that will um, getting the from the catalytic cracking. So, this is the process we are using in case of the um, catalytic fluid catalytic cracking process. This is the typical actually the uh, feed that is going to the reactor riser, what do we call it the riser reactor. The reaction is taking place and then uh, these are the cyclones they are there and the cyclones the catalyst separated and continuous the cyclone and this catalyst that is going to the um, for the catalyst regeneration and after the regeneration the catalyst that is continuously that is again it is joining this feed steam and then it is going to the FCC reactor. So, this is the actually the uh, typical FCC reactor which we are using in the refinery. The reactor let us now discuss in detail about the reactor regenerator and the fractionator. The feed to the unit along with the recycling steam is preheated to temperature of about 365 degrees centigrade to 370 degrees and enters the riser as I told in the flow diagram it is going to the riser where it comes in contact with the hard regenerated catalyst which you are getting from the regenerated uh, from the catalyst regeneration section at that, that which is at a temperature of 640 to 660 degree centigrade. Finely divided catalyst is maintained in aerated or fluidized state by the oil vapors and the fluid they behave like just it is the fluid with very fine particles are there and so the uh, it is called the not the actually the fluid uh, catalytic cracking. The catalyst section contains the reactor and regenerator and catalyst recirculate between these two continuously the continuous regeneration of the catalyst is there and then it go to the reactor. Spent catalyst that is regenerated to get rid of the coke that collects on the catalyst during the process which I told you that during the crack is normally some carbon rejection is there that carbon which is there and that carbon um, uh, that 
is that has to be removed from the catalyst before it is being um, recycled to the system. So, spent catalyst flow through the catalyst steeper to the regenerator, where most of the coke deposit burn off at the bottom, where preheated air and spent catalyst are made. Fresh catalyst is added and worn out catalyst removed to optimize the cracking process. Cracked hydrocarbon steam is separated into various products, which I told you LPG, one of the very important products of the FCC, gasoline are removed as the overhead as vapor, unconverted product like light cycle oil and heavy cycle oil are withdrawn as side steam. Overhead product is sent to the stabilization section because it is containing the gasoline and the LPG where a stabilized gasoline is separated from light products from which LP is recovered. So, typical this is a typical operating parameter in case of the FCC. These are the products already have discussed the what are the product that you are getting light gases after the separation of the LPG, gasoline, high octane gasoline that you are getting that will go to the gasoline port, light cycle oil, heavy cycle oil, clarified cycle oil and coke as a by product. Then the product uh, from the other product that uh, already I discussed about the some of the problem in the utilization of the a uh, lot of the work that is going on how to get um, the convert this light cycle oil to the more value added product. Uh, light cycle oil brand component for diesel pool are the light fuel because uh, all the part of the light cycle oil, the heavy cycle oil that mm, cannot go to the diesel pool. Heavy cycle oil optional heavy cycle oil product for fuel are the cutter stock, clarified oil or decant oil, sludgy for fuel oil, coke by product consumed in the regenerator to provide the reactor heat demand. This is a typical again the reactor part in case of the where the continuous regeneration of the catalyst and then it is going to the uh, uh, combustion is taking place first stage regenerator is there. And then here this is the um, your feed nozzles are there and then the second stage regeneration is there. So, the two stage reactor that is there in case of the FCC catalyst. Now, let us come to the FCC catalyst. Major breakthrough in the catalytic cracking process was development of the geolite catalyst, which demonstrated superior activity, gasoline selectivity and stability characteristic compared to the original MR for silica alumina catalyst. This is the uh, how the development from the from 1950 to 1990, the geolite contained that has increased. Similarly, the relative attraction index that has gone down because the uh, attraction index that is very important in case of the catalyst. Today, FC catalyst porous spray dried micro spherical powder particle size distribution of 20 to 120 micron and particle density uh, 1400 supplied under various grades of the particle size and attraction resistance because this is one of the very important property in case of the catalyst. Continuing improvement in the metal tolerance, coke selectivity because what we are in uh, interested less uh, coal formation and the it should be um, have the more and more resistance towards the metal. So, new breed of the catalyst are high metal tolerance with high matrix catalyst having better resistibility, regenerability and stability. Option for clean fuel, for up, upgrading FCC products into acceptable blending component following three steps are being used severe hydro processing of the feed to the FCC because this removal of the if your impurities which are present in the uh, 
um, virgin feed that is going to the FCC, treating each of the product in hydro treater, combination of the both steam, up steam and the down steam processing. As I told you in some of the refinery, the heavy residue from the hydro cracker that is also being processed, so we call it the resid FCC, where the residue is also along, it is not the vacuum gas oil directly which you are getting, some of the residue which are um, uh, produced during the various cracking process that is also going to the uh, uh, resid FCC. The RFC process uses similar reactor technology as the FCC, in so for the technology reactor regenerator system, uh, this is the same. And the, but only here is the, it is targeted for residual fields greater than 4 weight percent of the conversion carbon, more heavy residue that is being uh, processed. A two stage regenerator with catalyst cooling, which I told you the two stage regenerator was there, is typically used to control the higher coke production and resulting, because here we are using more heavier residue. So, the coke formation is more in comparison to conventional FCC where we are using the vacuum gas air, light vacuum gas air. Improvement in the riser termination devices have led to significant decreases in the post riser resistance time and post riser cracking. The benefits of the shorter catalyst and oil contact time have been lower by dry gas yields, lower delta coke on catalyst and more selective cracking to gasoline and light olefin. This is the benefit of the shorter residence time that you are having. Due to improvement in the reactor design, there is lower regenerator temperature and higher catalyst recovery. Some of the various version of the FCC are there. Uh, the, this is one of the process, the petro FCC process. The petro FCC process targets the production of the petrochemical feed is all rather than the fuel. As I told you that in future refinery that may be the petro refinery or the gasoline free refinery, means the gasoline, no gasoline from the Italy, completely it may be on the propylene mode and very less amount of the gasoline. So, that was the gasoline free refinery that is also now the world that has come. So, the here what is our main objective is to produce more petrochemical feed stock like propylene and the C4 gases that may be there. This new process which utilizes uniquely designed FCC unit can produce very high yields of the light olefins and aromatics then coupled with an aromatic complex. So, integration of the uh, FCC with the petrochemical complex that may be there. The catalyst section of the petro FCC is processes use a high conversion short contact time reaction zone that operates at elevated reactor riser outer temperature. This is the in max technology, in max technology that is has been developed by Indian Oil Corporation R and D division and this unit already in the Guwahati refinery of the IOC they have successfully that has been commissioned. The operational feature of the in max technology very high catalyst to oil ratio, high, higher riser temperature, higher riser steam rate, relatively lower regeneration temperature. These are the some of the benefits in case of the Inmax technology, propylene is higher, higher octane number you are getting and the multifunctional property catalyst that we are using, higher propylene selectivity, superior metal tolerance and lower coke formation is there. Maximizing the propylene output in the FCC, because as I told you, the future refinery that may be more through the propylene mode, because the it is more value added product than the gasoline. So, the now many of the refinery, because we see the our requirement of the total propylene 30 to around 35 percent is from the FCC we are getting. So, new FCC processes are being operated to maximize the yield of the propylene due to growing demand of the propylene, because the propylene huge amount of the propylene now you are using in the automobile industry apart from the other uses poly, uh, polypropylene fiber or the in the 
and the replacement of the uh, glasses, glasswares which were used, glass bottles that were being used in hospital. Significant scope exists in the refinery in Asia region to enhance the production of the propylene uh, in this region. Maximizing propylene yield from FCC is typically accomplished by combining a low rare earth catalyst system with severe reaction condition because normally when you are having the more severity means the more lighter products that will be getting. Some of the technology which are available are deep catalytic cracking based on the riser bed catalytic cracking, propylene max technology by ABS Limer, maxo fin process by mobile, Kellogg, superflex, advanced catalytic cracking by KBR. So, these are the some of the technology that is available for maximizing the propylene from FCC. This is the actually the uh, some of the technology and the propylene yield. Here you can see the conventional normally 5 to 6 percent propylene was there and now with the coming of this technology are they operating the FCC in the propylene mode, the propylene percentage that is in key. So, from the deep catalytic cracking 14 to 23, catalytic pyrolysis process 18 to 24, high severity FCC 70 to 25. In ma max technology that is the indigenous technology we are having developed by IUC R and D division 70 to 25 percent, max of in 15 to 25. Petro FC 20 to 25 and select component cracking that is 24 percent. This was about the FCC and the why the importance of the FCC is there. Next development that has taken place in case of the catalytic cracking is the hydro cracking because now the as I told you earlier also in most of the refinery now they have they are having both the FCC and the hydro cracking. So, hydro cracking is one of the most versatile process for the conversion of the low quality feed stock into high quality products like gasoline, naphtha, kerosene and diesel and hydro wax which can be used as a petrochemical feed stock. Because here what we are doing the cracking is being done in presence of the hydrogen. So, the both the pretreatment and the cracking both the process that is taking place and the quality of the here what the advantage because we are able to process more heavier uh, residue. Its importance is growing as more air, as a refiner search for the low investment option for producing clean fuel because they, they are going for the more heavier feed stuff. New environmental legislation require increasing and expensive efforts to meet the stringent product quality demands because here we are doing the hydro treatment. The quality of the gasoline that is better, um, sulfur compounds are less. Hydro can process wide variety of the feed stock producing wide range of the products. Feed it may be state run gas, gas oil which you are getting from the uh, atmospheric residue vacuum gas oil, cycle oils, coke gas oils, thermally cracked stock, solvent is asphalted residual oils, state and naphtha, cracked naphtha, these may be the feed stock to the hydro cracker. Means the naphtha which is having the higher octane number, sorry not a higher octane number, but uh, low octane number. Hydro cracking is used to reduce the tar formation and prevent the build up of coke on the catalyst serves to convert the sulfur and nitrogen compounds present in the feed stock to hydrogen sulfide and ammonia when the feed stock has a high paraffinic content. So, these are the some of the why the we are going for the hydro cracking. These are the product as you see the product are similar to the um, FCC, but only thing here we are not operating in the propylene mode. So, the in case of but only advantage other advantage is there here we are processing in case of the hydrocarbon more heavier uh, feed stock. So, the product which you are getting from hydrocarbon liquefied petroleum gas, motor gasoline, 
reformer feeds that may be in naphtha that may go to that uh, catalytic reforming, aviation turbine fuel, diesel fuel, heating oil, solvent and thinners, leave oil and FCC feed. As I told you, uh, the resid FCC where the hydrocracker um, bottom product that is going to the FCC. Hydro cracking is a two stage process combining catalytic cracking and the hydrogenation and that is also solving the purpose of um, treatment, pre-treatment you can say the hydro treatment. Feed stocks are characterized usually by a high polycyclic aromatic content, high concentration of the two principal catalysts, poison sulfur and nitrogen compounds. These are the two major catalyst poisons that may be present in the feed stock. Uh, let us compare now the catalytic cracking process with the hydro cracking. Catalytic cracking the carbon rejection, hydrogen addition is there, riser regenerator configuration, down flow packed bed because here it is the float bed and in case of the hydro cracking it is the fixed bed reactor. The LPG gasoline here it is more kerosene diesel that you are getting, few aromatics low sulfur and nitrogen content, product are rich in the unsaturated compound uh, components in case of the catalytic cracking means FCC. The hydro cracking process, let us now discuss about the hydro cracking process. We are having the single stage hydro cracking process. So, there what we are doing treating and cracking in a single reactor. In case of the two stage, we are having the two reactor here, all the reaction that is taking place in a single reactor. And work under high H2S and as the ammonia partial pressure, two stage hydro cracking, first hydro treated followed by hydro cracking, because in the first stage, mostly the hydro treating, some hydro cracking may take place, and then the here actually the low H2S and NH3 ammonia partial pressure. Recent development in the hydro cracking, there has been continuous development in the hydro cracking technology both in the process and the cat catalyst. Some of the important development in the hydro cracking has been mild hydro cracking and rigid hydro cracking like FCC. Mild hydro Cracking is characterized by relatively low conversion as compared to the conventional hydro cracking, which gives 70 to 100 percent conversion of heavy distillate at high pressure. Here, in case of the mild, it is around 20 to 40 percent. Mild hydro cracking route produces low sulfur desired by the future diesel specification. Now, mild hydro cracking route produces 10 ppm and which is produced by hydro cracking under mild condition. MSC allows increasing diesel production through the BGO hydro conversion. Hydro, hydro treatment and the hydro cracking catalyst. Hydro cracking process involved two steps of the catalyst, hydro pretreatment catalyst and hydro cracking catalyst. This is the how the we are achieving both the pre-treatment and the hydro cracking. The main objective of the pre-treat catalyst is to remove the organic nitrogen and other impurities like sulfur from the hydro cracker feed, allowing better performance of the second stage hydro cracking catalyst. That is what happening in case of the two stage hydro cracker. The initiation of the sequence of the hydro cracking reaction by saturation of the aromatic compound, pre-treat catalyst must have adequate activity to achieve above objective within the operating limits of the hydrogen partial pressure, temperature and the space velocity. Hydro cracking catalyst, hydro cracking catalyst is a bifunctional catalyst and has a cracking function and hydrogenation dehydrogenation function. The formal is provided by an acidic support, whereas the latter is imparted by the metals. 
acid sides the crystalline zeolite amorphous silica alumina, mixture of crystalline zeolite and amorphous oxide provide cracking activity, metals, noble metals, palladium, platinum or the non-noble metal molybdenum and other metals, cobalt, nickel provide the hydrogenation, dehydrogenation activity. These metal catalyze the hydrogenation of feed stocks making them more reactive for cracking and heteroatom removal as well as reducing the coke rate formation. Geolite based hydro cracking catalysts have following advantage greater acidity resulting in greater cracking activity, better thermal hydrothermal stability, better naphtha selectivity, better resistance to nitrogen and sulfur compounds, low forming coke forming tendency and easy reasonability. These are the some of the advantages of the geolite based hydro cracking. Single stage hydro, these are the process step furnace, first stage reactor section, second stage reactor section, high pressure separator, fractionation section, light and recovery section. Single stage hydro cracking process. In single stage hydro cracking, both treating and cracking steps are combined in a single reactor, which I told you. In this process, the feed along with the recycled unconverted residue from the fractionator is first hydro treated in a reactor and then the combined steam are fed to the second reactor where the cracking takes place in the presence of the hydro cracking catalyst. In the single stage process, the catalyst work under high H2S and the ammonia partial pressure. This is the single stage uh, actually the reactor that we are having, sorry this is the second two stage reactor that we are having. Uh, in case of the here the two react two stage reactors are there. In case of the two stage hydro cracking process, again the furnace, first stage reactor, second stage reactor section, third stage reaction section, fractionation section, light and recovery section that is there. Two stage uh, hydro cracking process. Preheated feed is first hydro treated in a reactor for desulfurization and denitrogenation in presence of preheated catalyst followed by hydro cracking in second reactor in presence of the strongly acid catalyst with a relatively low hydrogenation activity. So, this is what happening in case of the two stage hydro cracking process. As I told you in case of the two stage process in the first stage reactor the sulfur and nitrogen compounds are converted to hydrogen sulfide ammonia with limited hydro cracking. In the two stage process implies inter stage product separation that removes H2S and ammonia. In case of the two stage process hydro cracking catalyst works under low hydrogen sulfide and ammonia. Uh, this is the two stage hydro cracking process where we are having the uh, reactor 1, reactor 2, reactor 3 and this is the stripper section, this is the distillation section where we are separating the various product LPG, gasoline, kerosene and diesel. So, this is the two stage and if you see the earlier um, diagram which I show you that is the single stage, we do not have the third reactor, here only two reactors are there, here also we are separating the LPG, gasoline, kerosene, diesel and the residue from the hydro cracker that may go to the rigid FCC. These are the various hydro cracking technology provider, slate cracking, fixed bait, Chevron, EOP, IFP, BPUK, Shell, Standard and Linde. So, the Chevron they are iso cracking they call, in case of the UP it is unique cracking, in case of the uh, IFP they call it the hydro cracking. So, these are the some of the commercial 
hydro cracking process that is available. So, the chemistry of the hydro cracking, hydro cracking process is a catalytic cracking process which takes place in the presence of an elevated partial pressure of hydrogen and is facilitated by biofunctional catalyst having acidic side and metallic side which I discussed earlier also. These are the some of the hydro cracking reaction that is taking place during the hydro treating reaction and the hydro cracking reaction as I told you the both the things are because we are using the hydrogen along with the um, your heavy residue. So, the hydro treating operation is also taking place there in the hydro cracking process. So, various hydro cracking reactions which are taking place in case of the hydro cracking is the hydro desulfurization, denitrogenation, hydro deoxygenation, hydro metallization, olefin hydrogenation, partial aromatic situation. So, these are the series of reaction that is taking place in case of the hydro cracker. So, again in more various hydro cracking reactions are splitting of carbon carbon bond and are carbon carbon arrangement reaction and the that is the hydro isomerization, hydrogenation and dehydrogenation reaction that is taking place. These are the some of the operating variables in case of the hydro cracker, hydrogen partial pressure, reaction temperature, hourly feed velocity, liquid hourly feed velocity that is the LHSP of the feed, hydrogen recycle ratio, temperature, feed stock and the feed impurities. Uh, let us go in more detail about the some of the important parameters operating variables, temperature increase in the temperature accelerates cracking reaction on acid side and displaces the equilibrium of the hydrogenation reaction towards dehydrogenation. Too high temperature limits the hydro cracking of the aromatic structure. The pressure influences significantly the equilibrium dehydrogenation, dehydrogenation and hydrogenation reaction that, that takes place on the metallic side. The increase in the pressure for a given molar ratio of hydrogen feet correspond to increase in the partial pressure of the hydrogen will produce an increase in the conversion of the aromatic structures to saturated products which will improve the quality of the jet fuel, diesel fuel and oil with very high viscosity in them. Effect of the feed stock, a higher con Content of the aromatic hydrocarbons require higher pressure and higher hydrogen feed ratio. The lowest possible temperature and higher hydrogen consumption of the hydrogen and the severity of the process. Effects of the feed impurities hydrogen sulfide, nitrogen compounds, and aromatic molecules present in the feeds affect the hydro cracking reaction, increasing the nitrogen results in the lower conversion. Ammonia inhibits the hydro cracking catalyst activity requiring higher operating temperature, polymeric compounds have substantial inhibiting and poisoning effect, polynuclear aromatics present in small amount in the residue deactivate the catalyst. This is the effect of various variable feed rate increase decrease change effect on the catalyst type, conversion increase decrease, hydrogen partial pressure reactor pressure, recycle gas rate, recycle fuel. So, some are increase or decrease, some of the increase uh, that will be there. Uh, let us discuss in brief about the INMAX technology, which is the indigenous technology available from the Indian Oil Corporation and already as I told you the successfully it has been commissioned in the IUC Guwahati refinery. The operational feature of the Indemax technology is the very high uh, catalyst to oil ratio, higher riser temperature, higher riser is, is steam rate, uh, relatively lower regeneration temperature. Benefits LPG 35 to 65 percent, propylene yield is also high, high octane gasoline we are getting from the process. 
multifunctional property catalyst, higher propylene selectivity, superior metal tolerance and lower kit formation. As uh, I told you that the catalyst regeneration that is important. So, in case of the hydrocracker also the catalyst regeneration done by burning of the carbon and the sulphur, circulate the nitrogen with the recycle compressor, injecting a small quantity of air, catalyst temperature above the coke ignition temperature. So, these are the some of the references. Uh, so, this was about the FCC and the hydrocracker. I have gone very quickly about the FCC and hydrocracker. And the as I told you, the future refinery, what we are expecting that is be more and more propylene more because of the more and more um, value added product we are getting. So, the con continuous development that has been taking place in the refinery to improve the quality of the product to increase the propylene yield or to have the longer life of the catalyst. So, these are the some of the development and taking place and that was how the FCC to hydro cracking why we have gone to the hydro crack, cracking or it may be the rigid FCC where the more hydro heavier products we are um, by heavier products means the heavier residue we are cracking there. So, this is the about the catalytic cracking part. In the next lecture, we will be discussing about the catalytic reforming process, which is also one of the very important conversion process in the refinery from the petroleum refinery point of view and at the same time from the catalytic reforming uh, for the from the petrochemical point of view, because both the uh, refineries where they are in proving the octane number of the low octane nephta, they are having the catalytic. Now, it is the integral part of the so, Similarly, in case of the, because the catal, uh, the reformate which you are getting, this is rich in the uh, your aromatic. So, we are also using this catalytic reforming for the production of aromatic.